Hey guys, I'm Kristen from College Lead. I help students with planning high school courses and extracurriculars and also guide them through the college application process. I am starting a very exciting and new series called Campus Conversations with College Lead, where I interview current students and recent graduates of different colleges to give you insights into school life on campus and also any tips and tricks that other people can share on what you can do in high school to plan for college. Today we have a very special guest, my younger brother actually. He goes to UCLA and his name is Kyle. So uh, thank you so much for taking the time. Well, he didn't really have a choice, did he? Um, to join me on the first episode of Campus Conversations with College Lead. So with that, could you maybe introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name is Kyle and I am a rising junior at UCLA. My major is applied math and I am minoring in statistics. And in high school, I was just like Kristen. I was homeschooled. Well, I think the difference is you were actually homeschooled your entire pre-college experience, right? Yeah. Except for kindergarten, which really doesn't count. Yeah, so yeah. I was homeschooled all the way through high school. So college was really the first experience where I was in, in a public school, basically. Some of my viewers are actually homeschooled. And I think it would be really interesting for you to share what your experience of homeschooling is like. In kindergarten up to middle school, I was involved in this co-op group with a lot of homeschoolers. We had classes together one time every week where we would go and see a teacher, we would have homework, we would have just like a regular school day. And so through that, I was able to make a lot of good friends th through that, through that co-op and be able to just kind of get to know other people. But in high school, I, I started taking more online classes. I decided not to continue with that co-op group and took a lot more AP and independent study classes. Mm. Where did you take AP classes? Because usually it's all just within a public school. So how did you, did you just create a class on your own? How did you do that? So there are many different organizations like PA Homeschoolers or Scholars Online that allow, that offer online AP courses and I was able to take courses through that with certified teachers and those courses all built up towards the AP test. Mm. So basically online AP, re regular AP classes but just online. What do you think is the biggest difference in terms of studying between students who go to public school versus homeschooling and how do you think that factors into your experience at UCLA? Yeah, for studying for sure. There's a big difference in that for homeschooling, we have classes here and there. We don't have a set schedule. So in that sense, it's a lot more similar to college in that in college, you're only taking three or four classes. You don't have a eight hour school day with structured classes. So when I was taking online classes in high school, I was able to plan out pretty much my whole day and mm. just have classes here and there and really be able to build and start structuring my my day and that carried on into college and in that I was able to adjust really well ha having been used to being able to have that freedom in time mm. with not having classes 8 to 3 30 every day so would you say the homeschooling class schedule that you had is pretty similar to your experience at UCLA yeah definitely Interesting. So maybe you were more prepared then for college than other students. Yeah. What extracurriculars did you do in high school? And how did you find them? Because yeah. I'm sure you had to create your own because you didn't have school clubs, if you will. Yeah. So I focused a lot on piano and I entered many competitions and that took a lot of time, but it was really stressful and I got burnt out near the end. I also did some volunteering at my local church. We have a program called Awana. I was also involved in this music club called CCPAS where we organize events for musicians around the Bay Area. I was actually involved in this too for a little yeah. bit. So we put on a lot of um, recitals, workshops, and I was able to organize a couple of those as part of my extracurricular activity. I think it's interesting how you took music, which seems like your main extracurricular activity in high school but then use your experience in music to then add a leadership component to it through this student performing arts society. Yeah, if you can find a way to turn something you're interested in into a leadership opportunity, I think that will definitely be helpful for your college applications and that you can 
even in interviews, if it's something you're interested in, you'll be able to talk a lot about it and show that you're doing something not just for the safe, not just for college applications, but because you enjoy doing it. And I think that's what colleges want to see. Mm-hmm. I think that's an excellent tip. So remember that, guys. <laughs> I'm kind of curious, though. How did you even get started with piano or even volunteering at your church or even starting the Student Performing Art, Performing Arts Society? Because, again, it's a process of creating your own. So how did you find these opportunities in the first place? Yeah, so piano was something I, my mom started when I was really, really young. My parents allowing me to explore many things. And by the time we reached high school, we decided to narrow it down everything I was doing and piano was probably my strongest thing at that time. So I decided to kind of drop sports, drop other things and really focus on that. I think it's really interesting how you mention your extracurricular or how your extracurriculars change from middle school to high school in terms of narrowing down. Could you maybe talk a little bit more about that? What activities did you have to cut out? How did you make that decision and why do you have to even make that decision? Yeah. So In elementary school and middle school, I played a lot of sports. That took a lot of time. I did soccer, baseball, and (laughs) basketball. Yeah. Mostly recreationally. Soccer I did competitively in middle school, but those are just a lot of things I, you know, enjoyed a lot ever since I was a young kid. And I think by the time I hit high school... You're still a young kid. (laughs) Anyways, sorry, continue. (laughs) By the time I hit high school, I... Yeah, school got busy, so I couldn't keep all those up. So at, I think entering into high school, I realized that I wouldn't be able to perform well academically while maintaining all those different types of things. So I think it was at that point we knew that we had to cut some things out. And mm-hmm. at, that, at that time, we saw that piano was something, what was my strongest area. And that was something I was willing to really push in high school. Just because I know you, and I know that you still play sports for fun, um, could you speak a little bit about how dropping an extracurricular in high school doesn't necessarily mean that you have to drop it for life? You can still continue it if you're interested. Yeah, for sure. Because I'm sure I have many students who already I've talked to one-on-one, but they have a ton of different interests, all very talented at those, but they're in the process of having to make that decision to cut down. And sometimes it seems like it's the end of the world because... I don't know, for some students, maybe they'll think, oh, I'll never be able to go back into journalism again or go back into sports, but that's not necessarily the case. So could you maybe talk a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. If you want to drop something, you're, it's, by drop, I don't mean like cut it out of your life completely. I mean, just you probably don't spend as much time in it. Maybe you don't play for the school team anymore, but you can still like hang out with friends and like, for, for in my example, I can, I could still, I still went out and just played soccer with people for fun. And it's still something I did and I still do enjoy. It's just that I didn't spend time like training myself or joining like a competitive team, which would take a lot, a lot of time. And yeah, even in college, you can probably pick those things back up. So like I was able to participate in soccer and baseball IMs and those were just really fun. And I was able to just kind of have fun continuing to do sports even though I didn't I didn't continue to pursue them at a high level in high school mm-hmm. um, also again because I know you you also are involved in ping pong right yeah and that's something that you didn't even you weren't even part of the team in in high school so it was something new that you were even able to start right because you had the time yeah one last question I wanted to ask about homeschooling is what should a student consider if he or she wants to try homeschooling now because everyone is forced to get a taste of it given the circumstances i would probably say see how well you're doing right now with online classes if you're able to study well with them if you're able to still be able to be efficient and just study well at home not in a place with other people around see if you can adjust into that type of study space really well and also see how much you enjoy online classes if it's something that you like or that you think you can you think you will be able to do well in then I could I would say you could definitely consider homeschooling but if it's something that you just hate right now you really hate last semester or you just can't 
deal with having teachers talk to you through the video rather than like in person, then homeschooling is probably not for you. So now moving to college apps, how or when did you get started with that process? I definitely got started right after junior year. So the mm. summer before senior year. Yeah, so I think I spent the summer mostly just working on essays. Mm. And then during fall, that's when I started looking more into the different colleges that were available through the Common App or through the UC system, because those were the two categories I was trying to get into. And at, during fall, when I started to work on my resume, work on game recommendation letters. Mm -hmm. And throughout fall, I continued working on the essays. How did you decide what to write about for your Common App essay or even UC essays? How did you get that brainstorming process started and even later select which topics to write about? The way I kind of approached it was I listed out my extracurriculars and other like important things or just big, what big life experiences. And I looked at the different essay prompts. And I kind of just thought which ones fit in with which. Could I? If the question was asking about like a leadership position, leadership experience, then I realized that I had leadership, I had a leadership role in CCPAS, and I was able to connect that to that extracurricular. And I was able to write, write that essay talking about my experiences as a leader in CCPAS. So I think just listing out all the extracurriculars and then listing out the essay props and seeing which ones kind of match together was how I approached it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, going back to colleges then, which colleges were you deciding between uh, towards the end of your senior year in high school? Yeah, so the main two I was looking into was UCLA and UC Berkeley. And for both of them, I was admitted as a math major. How did you decide which one to end up going with? Obviously you chose UCLA, yeah. but uh, what drew you to UCLA and what made you a little hesitant about UC Berkeley? For sure the food, because <laughs> UCLA is ranked, I think number two for best dining hall food, so it's really good. Yeah. I went to Bruin Day, which is a day for newly admits. They were able to go and take tours of the campus and just be exposed to different clubs and it's just a day where people where UCLA welcomes in the admitted freshmen and give them a taste of the UCLA experience. I went to that and then the following weekend I went to Cal Day which is the same thing but for UC Berkeley and overall I just saw that I would probably f fit better and just enjoy my experience at UCLA more than at UC Berkeley. So I think it's not at that point at that point, I wasn't really worried too much about like, is this school better than the other school in terms of departments? Because I know UCLA Math and UC Berkeley, they're pretty, they're both pretty high up there. And I think at that point, I was just one, I was just looking at which college you think, I, which college do I think I would enjoy better? Which college would I be able to succeed in? How did you choose your major? Yeah. So throughout high school or ever since elementary school even, all the way through high school. Elementary math. school? Math was always my favorite subject. For some reason, I really enjoyed doing those 60, no, no, 10 by 10 multiplication tables. Can't relate. Everyone really hated. I oh, enjoyed doing those. I hated those. I hated but, those um, so much. Yeah, math, was, I was always fascinated by math and just playing around with numbers and algebra specifically. So going into college applications, I knew that I wanted to do something related to math because math was my favorite subject and I knew that I, that's something I could be really strong in. And I knew I could switch into different fields because the major you go into college with isn't necessarily the one you're going to stick with all the way through. I'm pretty sure most colleges allow you to switch. And I knew that I would be able to figure out what I wanted to do once I got into college. I started taking classes and seeing maybe just math by itself was something I wanted to do or not. I think that's actually a really good transition into research as you were talking about with how math can be used in many different fields. Since 
you're my brother and I know you. I, he, I know that you work in a neural lab right now, actually. So could you maybe start off by sharing any advice you have for students, both in high school or in college, who are interested in research? What can they do? How did you get into a lab? For sure, I know it's really, really scary to apply to a lab. If you have, for example, I had, n I had no, no history in like neuroscience, except for maybe AP Bio. I had no exposure to it. And so I was, when I applied, I was thinking there's no way I'm gonna get accepted because I know nothing about neuroscience. Even though they were looking for like a data analyst, someone to do data analysis for them. But neuroscience was just something that was not, I didn't think I was really interested in. And I knew I didn't really have any credentials to show that I would fit in well. But Kristen, pushed me to apply. <laughs> she, she encouraged me to apply. My and word is law. I'm just glad she did. I'm glad she did because they accepted me and I've been enjoying, I've, I've enjoyed working with them and just learning about neuroscience as well as helping them to see different things in the data that they give me. But in terms of advice, I would say just apply and that the worst they can do is reject you <laughs> and it hurts, but just go for it. They, they can't hurt you in any way. How do you like working in the lab so far? It's been a lot of fun. It's definitely not what I expected. I expected it to be kind of... I expected it to be really overwhelming and confusing, especially in neuroscience, something as complicated as neuroscience. But luckily I have an amazing PI who was able to break things down into very digestible parts. And he was able to initially walk me through the different projects he was working on in a really clear way. Okay, so I guess back to college, could you describe what life is like on campus? And as a homeschooler, how did you integrate yourself into the social scene at college? Yeah, so one thing I really like about UCLA is that it's, there are a ton of clubs and those clubs are usually really active. And a lot of people at UCLA, they try their best to be involved in at least one or two clubs. It's, it's very common for people to be involved in like up to three or four different clubs. And through that, I was able to make a lot of friends. And so I think I was able to adjust really well because UCLA is a culture that is very welcoming. Which clubs are you a part of? So right now, I am part of GOC, which is Grace on Campus. It's a Christian fellowship. I'm also involved in the UCLA Table Tennis Club. What would you say is the best thing about UCLA other than the food? The campus is really pretty. It's really sunny in LA, and that's that's nice. The dining halls are honestly the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> East is really really good. <sighs> um, to my viewers out there, I'm recommending considering <laughs> other factors in addition to the dining hall food. I can say that Harvard's dining hall, while it meets all your needs, is not perfect but I really did enjoy going to Harvard. So having good food is not essential for a good education. Just putting that out there. Maybe not education, but as a statistician, I can say that good food correlates with happiness in the college experience. Another question I have now is it's summer. So obviously you are off from school officially, but what are you doing now um, that you have free time? Yeah. I actually don't have too much free time. So right now I am taking a summer class. I am studying for GRE because grad school is a possibility in my future. And I'm continuing to do research for a lab I'm in. And then I am also just starting to prep for the recruiting season coming up next year, next, next fall, in a couple months. That wraps up the questions that I have for Kyle. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful and that you enjoyed it. And Kyle, thank you so much for your time. I know you're very busy, so I appreciate it, even though you didn't right, have didn't freedom have of choice. choice. I didn't in... have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. You enjoyed this experience, right? You loved it. Yeah, you I absolutely loved, loved it. Anyways, stay tuned for the next episode, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching.